Job chapter 12. Now Job is going to answer Zophar from chapter 11, what we studied last night. Uh, the remarks that he makes about God. And Job answered and said, No doubt, but ye are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. Now, knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. And understanding in the Bible is your relationship to God. He said, listen, you guys had the wisdom. You can, know, you can apply what you know, but there's no understanding. you got to have knowledge to have wisdom. And he said, you know what? You, you, what you what you going to apply yourself is going to die. But I have understanding. The re relationship to God. These guys have been throwing stuff at Job. And a lot of it, it's right, it's true. But what does it have to do with Job? And Job's like, listen, I know, I know, I know. But... In relation to God, you don't know. I know. And going to Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, a testimony of God himself, one that eschewed evil, one that feared God, and one that, you know, when his children he thought they sinned, would have a family sacrifice for them, understood God. As well as you do. I am not inferior to you. Job is no more, no one more important. He says they have understanding, but he doesn't. He says I have an understanding. As well as you. Listen, we all got the wisdom, we all got understanding. But he doesn't lump the understanding with the wisdom to them. I'm no one important. Yea, who knows not such things as these? What can you guys answer to me about my problems and what's going on now? You threw a lot of wisdom words at me. You threw a lot of knowledge at me. But the understanding what? I know more than you. I am as one mocked of his neighbor. Now his neighbor he's talking about, he's giving you a definition, is the guys are sitting with him. He says, I'm being mocked by you guys. You guys are picking on me. You're harassing me. Who calls upon God? I'm calling upon God. I want God to answer me. And he answers him. Who? The neighbor. I've been trying to, you know, listen, I poured out my spirit and I believe it's Job chapter 3. I poured out my heart to God how I feel, the distress I am, and since then you guys have been answering. You haven't even given God a chance. So when you go back to Job chapter 3, I believe it's Job chapter 3, he speaks out finally. Job chapter 3, and then you go to Job chapter 4, it's almost instant Eliphaz starts speaking. Because God does speak to Job later on. After Elihu, who has some sense, who has some knowledge, who has some understanding, who has some wisdom, has been speaking. And speaking right. And remember, we know Job 42, that these three friends that are now talking are sinning and have to offer a sacrifice. He said, listen, I called upon, Job says, I've called upon God. And you know what i got for an answer? I've got you idiots. And I'm sure you, in, in time, and many people have had this happen to them. 
Someone's come up to you and they don't have the answer. They think they do, but they don't. The just upright man is last to scorn. Is he calling himself just and upright? If he's talking about himself, what do you classify that as? Self-righteous. Just, upright. And you guys are laughing at me. Because of the condition I'm in. He that is ready to slip with his feet is as a lamp despised in the thought of him that is at ease. Now I went to the commentaries on this and I really don't know what, what it, it's speaking about. But we're going to see later on which will come back uh, later on verse at the end of this chapter. But let's look at it for a minute. He that is ready to slip. Who prepares to slip? I mean, if, if you're going to walk on ice, well, you know, you're, you're bracing yourself. If you're going down steep stairs, maybe, you know, you, you got an awkward load or something, you'll hang on to, a, to the hand railing. But who really uh, readies himself for a slip? Well, one that doesn't have any security. What about a born-again Christian who's, who, who's preparing to slip because he doesn't believe in, that he has eternal life, security thereof? You don't normally prepare yourself for a slip. And ready means know or prepare. Imagine yourself. Hi, how you doing? Good. Yeah, I'm pre what are you doing? I'm preparing myself to slip. Okay, with his feet, so it's a tripping, is as a lamp despised. Why would you just despise a lamp? I'm going to show you something when we get to the later on in this chapter. And the commentaries were good, but I think the Lord showed me something. I'm not more important. A lamp despised. When, when do you despise a lamp? Think about Paul. In the thought of him that is at ease. The guy's sitting back. He's thinking about a lamp that he doesn't want. I can't go anywhere with that verse, but when we get to a later verse, maybe something, I don't know. Other than that, I can't. Now look at this. We are in the Holy Bible, right? You know the Holy Bible has Satan speaking in it? You know the Holy Bible has saints and their sins in it? Now watch this. Your Holy Bible. The tabernacle, or the tabernacles, of robbers prosper. Do they prosper? And they that provoke God are secure. Are they secure? Into whose hand God bringeth abundantly. God gives all these wicked people a lot of things. Is that true? In the eyes of someone who is carnally looking at the earth and not looking at God, yes, it is true. Look at who God has given money to. And a great preacher says, we'll show you what God thinks of money. You look at all these people, you look at all these churches, you look at all these Christians, those that don't do right, those who do what God told them not to do and stuff like that. You look at their life and it's like, wow. And I got to sit here and try to watch my paycheck and watch my checkbook. I got to sit here. I'm in pain and suffering. And what about them? And Job is saying, well, I was doing right. Why on earth did this happen to me? 
But we get our eyes off. And the Bible says, do not envy the wicked. Do not envy those who do wrong and look like they're doing good. Because you're not looking at it eternally. Now, there's two prospects for those who do wrong and you think they're prospering. Let me tell you number one. If he's lost, he's going to burn eternity in hell. You won't if you're saved. That guy says, I'll, I'll pluck everything down, rebuild, and, and make bigger barns and all that. And he died and went to hell, Jesus said. He said, what about the Christian? Uh, he'll stand the judgment seat of Christ at complete loss. I have been in enough churches and enough things like that. And you know what? It is discouraging for me sometimes. But then I got my eyes on the world and it's like, hey, I'm going to keep doing what God tells me to do, which is right. And I can do it scripturally and keep my eyes on doing things right by the scriptures. And God's going to reward me at least one crown. Well, everybody else looks like they're prospering. But ask now the beast. And they shall teach thee. Watch animals. Jesus gave a great story of anxiety with, the, with animals and flowers. They never worry. I've always wondered when you chase a squirrel or a cat across the road, you know, flying down the road 90 miles per hour, when they lean up against a tree, you know, you're going to feel their heart beat. Do animals die of heart attacks? I don't know. Watch them. Watch them how they build. Watch how they take care of their young. What? Ask now the beast and they shall teach thee. You can have a bird feeder. You can, I mean, according to scriptures and, and Proverbs, all that. And watch the ants. Go to the ant, thou slugger, he says. And the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. What well, shall they tell thee? All kinds of things they can tell you. They can almost tell you what is going to happen. If you watch the animals, they start acting weird. Something's coming. Or speak to the earth. Imagine a guy going up to a rock. Hey, rock, how you doing? Going to dirt. Hey, dirt. And it shall teach thee. Now, I have no idea what the earth is going to teach you. How old it is. At one time it was underwater. At one time there was a mass grave of different places of all the animals in the world. How about that? They don't teach you evolution though. You got to lie about that. And the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. What? I don't know. Go ask the fish. They'll tell you one thing though. A little fish is eaten by a big fish which is eaten by a bigger fish which is eaten by a bigger fish which is caught by man and eaten on the plate. Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord has wrought this? Oh, if you want to see how God works in his animals, it does not show you evolution. It shows you God takes care of them, Jesus said. It shows that God will tend the funeral of a sparrow, that God looks upon the beauty of the fields. Animals were given to us to be an illustration. A dog in the Bible is an unclean animal. But a dog should teach you patience. A dog should teach you loyalty. A dog should teach you love. And cats were put on this earth by the devil. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing? Who's that? And the breath of all mankind. Now go back in chapter 11. Much what Zophar said. Now you look how God's, Job is answering him. So listen. God holds all the souls. Does not the ear try words? Unless you talk too much. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know what, you know what, you know what, you know what Job has told you? When you hear something, you're supposed to try it. You're without excuse. 
Well, just say this prayer and you'll be saved. Well, wait, and it, it don't sound right. And you ought to have ears as a born again Christian when you hear somebody quoting the Bible. Like, that don't sound right. What's wrong with that verse that guy just quoted? Something, something sound, sounds wrong. If you are a born again Bible believing Christian, you can't tell an NIV being quoted. There's something wrong with your ears. When a guy gets up and says, Jesus too has his blood, you better quote and know the verse says that flesh and blood cannot inhale. You better know. When a woman gets up and preaches and you, that don't sound right. My Bible says she's not to preach. And when a bunch of people come up to you and say, hey, let's go, let's go do something wrong. Proverbs 1 should come into your ear. You know, that's wrong. And the mouth tastes his meat. Well, the Bible is spoken of as bread. The Bible is spoken of as water. The Bible is spoken of milk. The Bible is spoken of meat. You are to digest God's word. And Job did not have God's word written. When the ancient is wisdom... Now, this can be applied two ways I've seen. The old men. It can also apply to God. I mean, God is old. God is so old that he doesn't have any years. You can have an old man. He can be as dumb as a doorpost. Just because he's got gray hair doesn't mean. Listen, these guys are probably old and they don't know nothing. Elihu comes up and says, listen, I'm younger than you guys. And he said, listen, age is supposed to bring wisdom. Wait till we get to what he says, Lord willing. But he's been talking about God. He's saying with, with the ancient is wisdom. God has all wisdom. God knows how to apply what he knows. And knows how to do it sinlessly. Holy. Righteously. And perfect, I mean 100% that time. And the length of days understanding. God knows our length of days. God knows when the rapture is going to happen. And it's the perfect time it's going to happen. God knows how long you need to live lost. And God knows how long you need to live saved. And God knows how long you need to live in this city. And how long you got to move to this place. And God knows how long to put President Obama in the White House even though you don't like it. God knows how long to do things. God knows how long to have a tornado touch the ground, how long to stay on the ground before it goes up. Everything that God knows about time is God applying what he knows properly and holy, and a lot of people don't want to believe that. Especially when it comes to the President of the United States. Why did we get four more years? Because God knows! Rely on God. And strength. You see what he did to Egypt? You see what he did to Babylon? Whatever reason, those gates for the river were left down and the, and the Medes came right in and conquered the city by grace and strength of God. Over and over, God says, my outstretched hand and I get you guys out of Egypt. You want somebody to fight your battles, you call upon God. He's got the armament. He has counsel and understanding. Go to God when you need advice. Don't go to a Christian counselor. Go to God. Then go to godly men unlike Rehoboam. And understanding. God has wisdom, God has knowledge, and God has understanding. God knows what to do with his wisdom for himself to be holy. Even Satan doesn't even know that. Satan thinks he's going to destroy Job and God's using it to better Job. 
Satan thinks at the very end, when he's released from the uh, millennium, and he's, he's bound from his chains, he's let go, he's going to gather this world army, at least World War IV, and we're going to finally go in to conquer God, and God's like, boom, gone. So, behold, he breaketh down, and it cannot be built again. How many cities did God break break down that are not built? They try to build. You want to? Have, they say that all over parts of the world, about the same time that there were these pyramids all over the world, about the time of the Tower of Babel. God said, "No, no matter what you do, you can't do it." He shutters up a man, and there can be no opening. I don't care what church. I don't care what people. If God shuts up a man, I don't care what you do with, with health insurance. I don't care what kind of hospital. I don't care what kind of doctors. If God put that man in that condition, and God wants him to be like that, you ain't going to stop him. Only thing you can do is pray. And God can answer that prayer as yes or no. And there's a reason. And there's a holy reason. And men don't want to believe that. Behold, he with, withholdeth the waters. And they dry up. Nothing to drink. Nothing to water crops. It's been the history of, of all the world. At one time he gave too much water. Who stopped God when, it, when he flooded upon the earth? And what are you going to do when God says that land deserves no more water for how they wasted it? How are you going to do a rain dance? <laughs> yeah, God's up there laughing. You know, when, when they built that Tower of Babel, man is so great, God said to the Holy Spirit and to, and to the Son, we got to go down there and take a look at that thing. <laughs> Calls a couple angels, a couple, you know, Native Americans, Indians are out there doing a, doing a, you know, water dance. God's like, Michael, send a couple of your men down there. See what that guy's doing. I can't see. Just tell me what he's doing. Going back. He's doing a rain dance, Lord, for you to make it rain, or, the, you know, the gods out there. What a fool. God says, I'll laugh. Proverbs chapter 1, you don't want to hear what I tell you to do. I'll laugh at you. Call upon your gods. That's what he's doing. Are they answering? Also, he sendeth them out. Rain. And they overturned the earth. Noah's day. So God can cause a drought and God can cause a flooding. How are you going to... Oh, what we're going to do is we're going to be... We're going to build dams. We're going to build... Passway. We're going to build a city in America that's under sea level. And we're going to build levees to protect it. And he just blew, blew, wind goes off. <laughs> Show how good they are. And they give the, the army corps and all that the credit and not God. With him is strength. Again. And wisdom. Again. Double strength. Double wisdom. The deceive and the deceiver are his. Even if you're lost, even if you don't believe in God who God is, you belong to God. When you die, your soul, I mean, excuse me, when you die, your spirit goes back to God, your breath. Your soul goes into Satan's hell that God made. And in your body, you'll stand before the God that you didn't believe in. That's, that's going to be comical. How many atheists are going to stand at the white throne judgment and... Oh, it says a second death. Imagine then when God that they don't believe in tells them to go to hell. But I don't believe in you. <laughs> I don't care. Go to hell. That's why you're going to hell. You don't believe in me. 
Hebrews 11, about 6 or 7. Says, He that must come to me must believe who I am, something like that. He leadeth counselors away spoiled. He maketh the judges fools. Samson. Samson, you really love women? Yeah, I love women. Okay. Go for it. Christians, you want that kind of that worship? Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right, place the works before Jesus. Okay, we're. Then you go through the ashes and there's nothing. Why is there nothing? That's the church you wanted. You got your applause. You got everything there. You ain't getting nothing here. That's what you wanted. He loosed the bond of kings. Manasseh, the most wickedest king, the most long reigning king of Judah. We've got to appeal. We've got to get rid of President Obama. He loses the bond of kings. I don't care if you call him a president or prime minister or whatever. God is in authority. And girded their loins with a girdle. I don't. Strength. I assume that is. Or clothing. He leadeth princes away spoiled. And overthroweth the mighty. You can be the most strongest, the most military, the most powerful nation. And God says destroy Babylon. Where is it today? Go somewhere in the world today and go grab me a Babylonian. I've got some questions for him in, in, with stuff that happened in the Bible. Go find me a Babylonian. Well, the Hebrew and the Greek. Go find me a Greek that speaks biblical Greek, please. That's not too far along, was it? Hey, that's in our time, A.D. Go find a biblical speaking Greek. Speak biblical Greek to a Greek that is over in Greece today, and he'll look at you like... <laughs> but I'm speaking the Greek. You can speak Polish. He remove, removeth away the speech of the trusty and taketh away the understanding of the age. God! 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 Not no stuff put on a frying pan or not no other kind of stuff putting chemicals in the ground. God will give your brain fried. You want to smoke marijuana? Go ahead. God gave man the wisdom to say you don't smoke it. You want to keep smoking even though man tells you not to? Okay. Don't go crying when your brain's wasted. Alzheimer's. Let's get down to the foundation. God authorized Alzheimer's. Now, whether it was the foundation of man or Satan or God himself, I don't know. But God allowed it. God allowed the disease to touch Job. You want a cure for, uh, for cancer? You want a cure for Alzheimer's? You want a cure for the cures that you want today? You better seek God and not doctors. You'll never find it. And you keep killing babies like you're killing, you had maybe killed the answer that you wanted. Listen, don't blame the world for the mess that we're in today. Blame the churches are not standing up. Keeping their little Easter pageants and their little Christmas parties and don't say hell and don't say turn or burn and just hey, the Bible just says everyone open the Bible and we do what we want to do. We don't want to offend anybody. The guy says, okay, fine. The public school system is in a mess that it is today because no Bible-believing Christians walked in that courtroom with, uh, not Roe versus Ray, uh, the monkey trial. 
Where were the Bible-believing Christians in that courtroom to testify for God? Where were they? These idiots today, they oh, we want to keep our guns. We want to keep our guns. We hate President, uh, I almost said Bush, Obama. Well, march your butt up to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Get in there and tell the guy personally what you feel about him. Tracy has seen the letter that I found the other day. I wrote to President Obama. And I didn't tell him he was an idiot. I didn't tell him he needed to get out of office. I told him and Michelle and his two daughters, they need to be saved. Your righteous, born-again president may be the one that's in the White House today, but you don't want to witness to him. You don't want to do anything about him. You just want to gripe and complain and let God give you leprosy. You don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know your Bible. He pours contempt, despising, upon princes, princes, and weakens the strength of the mighty. Listen, just because you got muscles, just because you got an army, God just laughs. One angel wiped out an entire army in one night, and he didn't even have to lift a finger, and he didn't do it with a gun. Guns don't kill, morons behind the trigger kill. Now some stupid state wants to have a gun law for blind people to get a gun. Oh, yeah. All right. He discovers deep things out of darkness. Let me ask you something. Are they really comics that are flying by, or is it the prince of the powers in the air? Why do they always say, when I died, I've seen the light? And it says over there, Corinthians, he has transformed himself as an angel of what? Light. Ah. I need a beer light. I've got to have a light meal. I've got to have a cartoon character called Mr. Light. And all the, the, the fancy castles, and I got this light coming out. Well, you go back to what we read in verse 5. The lamp despised. Have you ever read John 3.19? Men despise the light because they love the wickedness. They love the darkness. We'll finish 22. He discovers the deep things out of the darkness. Listen, God knows how many beers you've had in the dark bar room. God knows even the lights are out that you're sleeping with someone who's not your spouse. God knows in the darkness that window you're about to break or shimmy to get in to steal. God knows about the darkness. You can't hide from God. He knows where Satan is. He knows where the principalities are. He knows about hell because he's been there. The Bible speaks hell as darkness. Run that to John chapter 3 verse 19. I think it sheds light in verse 5 in verse 22. I think it's man in his wicked ways. He had ready to slip. How about stay in the street corner and tell them they're going to go to hell if they don't churn or burn? They've already heard the message. In their soul, they know it's true. They just don't believe it because Romans 1 says they, all, they enjoy it. His feet is a lamp despised. Jesus Christ is the light, John chapter 1. The church, <coughs> not today, the church, <coughs> not today, is likened to a candlestick of Revelation, chapter 1. The thought of him that's at ease. Verse 22, and bring out to light the shadow of death. 
The Bible says we are a light on a hill. We to tell people where they're going when they're to die. Imagine, you're going to die. Can't tell you to repent. Can't tell you to turn. Can't tell you about hell. That's foolish. But you're going to die. He increases the nation. So population is given by God. Why is China so full of people? God. Why? I don't know. They're all God forsaken people, not all of them. And destroy is them. How many people were in Babylon again? And God destroyed them in one night. How many people are in America and God will destroy them? He enlarges the nation. How come Hitler spread himself across? Because God said through Job, he enlarges the nations. And America turned her back on God, giving him the credit for winning World War II. You know, it was our submarines. It was our Navy. It was us. God bless America. And God's up there with a the puke bucket. Ugh. And strengthen them again. He take away the heart of the chief of the people. He take away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth. Well, if you take your heart away, guess what? You're dead. God can remove and set up leaders of nations and cause them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. I wonder how many times that's happened. You get a nation goes out there and they just don't know where they're going and die because their army has no food, no water, no supplies. America's in a wilderness. She don't know where she's going. And where she came from, she changes and lies. I'm talking about history. It's funny how we're listening to Brother Knox's tape and we're seeing a lot of stuff that happened is happening again today by Christians. And when you read the history or hear the history that Brother Knox says and what the Christians are doing today, the people back there in the history were the ones who were the Bible rejectors. How many people in Fox's Book of Martyrs fought? They don't want to die for Christ. They want to pull a gun. I don't care you don't like it. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. Peter said, I got a sword. Peter and Jesus said, put it away. Hand me that ear. Yeah, put that right back there. I think the Bible says that we learned last night from church, our weapons are not carnal. They grope in the dark without light. Now, grope is when you're feeling, and then you find that edge of the chair there that you didn't know actually you didn't think was there, and then let out a big scream. Grope is when it's dark, and you're like, okay, there's the wall. All right. <clears throat> that was the doorway. And you fall flat. They grope in the darkness without light. Without Jesus Christ, they have no idea where they're going. That sheds light on verse 5 and verse 22. Verse 5 said, ready to slip. There sometimes you walk in the middle of the night, you just know that something's going to get you. You don't want to, but you know it's going to happen. There's something there, something left behind is going to catch your little toes. 
and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. A drunken man, when he staggers, he, he's not walking a straight line. And that's the number one reason why cops know, hey, you've been drinking. Step out here and, and walk this straight line. And when you can't walk the straight line, you have testified to yourself that you've been drinking. And there's a quite possibility for a lost man, when he stands at the great white throne judgment and the books are open, his own work, his own attitude, everything he did is going to stand against him. Guilty. But only in America you can, can't walk the white line, and but you can get yourself a lawyer and get you off. It ain't going to happen at the great white throne judgment because the only lawyer that's allowed in the courtroom in heaven is Jesus Christ, and he only defends those that believe on him. You ain't going to get no lawyer to defend your drunken cause at the great white throne judgment, my friend. No way, no how. When you're found guilty here, you will stand before God and you'll be sentenced. And there's no purgatory. There's no time off for good behavior. It's eternal. Now is the time to turn. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time to get right. And only a preacher would be fool enough to tell his people not to preach that, not to tell people about that, but to be happy go a little Christian and let you near the light shine. Foolishness. Foolishness. We're told a lot in the book of Job about how powerful God is. How powerful the light is. Matter of fact, I think it's called the Light and Power Company. And when you don't pay the bill, as Christ has paid the bill, they come in and turn it off. And you sit in darkness. It's the Bible. And some people didn't like what I said about guns and all that. That's, hey, you want to be wrong? You be wrong. Have a good day.